Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the sixth video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we covered the stir cat and trim functions. In today's session, we'll discuss replace, split, to lower, and regex basics. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In the previous two sessions, we learned how to manipulate strings using parse URL, parse path, parse user agent string, trim, and stircat. When you have a character or group of characters in a string that you want to identify and substitute, we can use replace. For our examples today, we'll be using free Azure Data Explorer based datasets found at kc7cyber.com. When we look at the employees table, we can see a field for email addresses in the fictitious company of Castle and Sand. Let's focus on that field and replace all of the instances of .com with .net by using the replace function. When we extend a new field and type in replace, we have several options. Since this field is a string data type, for now let's type in replace underscore string. The parentheses have three arguments. The first is where you want to perform the replace function. And in this case, it's in the email address field. Next, we place what we want to be replaced. And lastly, what we want to replace it with. When we execute this query, we can see the changes were made rapidly on 1500 records. In our next example, we're looking at the file creation events table and projecting only unique host names. We see a normal pattern of some numbers and letters followed by a hyphen, followed by the machine type. In this example, we want to divide the field. Our goal is that we only have the machine type in one field. We can use the split function for this task. We can extend a new column and type in the split function. Our arguments will be where we want to perform the split and what we want to split on. In this case, we can split on the hyphen. We can see the output is in the form of an array in which there are two string objects. Do you remember how to parse an array? In this case, we can use parse JSON and reference the index value of one to represent the second object in the array. If we wanted to summarize or use distinct on the output, we get an error because the data type is currently dynamic. So if we wanted to perform those actions, we can change the output back to a string like this. When we rerun the query, we can see the machine type field is reset to a string, and we can perform a summarization on the field without error. For our next practical example, let's take a look at the email table and project the subject field. There may be times when we need to make the letters in a field either all uppercase or all lowercase. In this situation, we can use either two upper or two lower. As we extend a new field, we simply type in two lower and place the name of the field of interest, and it performs the expected output. When we change the function to two upper, we can see the output is now an uppercase. In the beginner series, we talked about using double equals, has, and contains to find and filter for items of interest. Each has a different level of precision and requires different levels of resources to execute. These take care of most of our searching and filtering needs. If we need more options beyond a basic string search, we can use regex. Regex is short for regular expression and can be used to find or find and replace patterns in a string. There are many forms of regex, and KQL supports the RE2 form. You can conceptualize regex as its own language, and RE2 as a dialect of that language with unique syntax. As an example, let's go back to the process events table 
and looked at distinct host names. We could easily search for exact matches using double equals. We could match on the machine type after the hyphen because it's a delimiter using has, or we can match on substrings using contains. What if we need to find host names with no numbers in them? In this case, we could use matches regex to assist us. We can use where to filter, then use matches regex with a space between the two words. In the quotes, we can place our regex statement. When we run this query, we can see it's filtered for host names without any numbers in them. Regex is a powerful tool for finding patterns using matches regex, but it can take considerable resources in some use cases. The initial caret symbol indicates the beginning of the line, and the dollar symbol indicates the end of the line. Next, we have brackets, which mean a character class. In this case, the 0 to 9 references numbers. The caret before the numbers is a negative, so think of it like an exclamation point in KQL. Up to this point, we're just saying no numbers. The asterisk means that the pattern we identify can appear in any number of characters in the field. There are also many different ways to write a regex-based statement and get the same results, since the language also has shortcut symbols. Let's do one more practical exercise and move to the employees table and look at distinct roles. In this example, we want to find all the roles that only have one word. The first caret indicates the pattern should start matching from the beginning of the string. The dollar sign indicates it should match to the end of the string. The brackets indicate a character class with the initial caret inside of the brackets used as a negation, just like the exclamation point in KQL. The double slashes with the S represents characters without a white space. The plus after represents that it will match one or more of the preceding filters. So in this case, if there are instances without one or more white spaces, it will be included. When we run this query, we see it found the only role that had one word, with no white space included in the string. There could be an entire YouTube channel dedicated to learning regex but we wanted to give you some basic use cases with examples in this series to understand the potential. Generative AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot are great options for building regex statements. That's it for today's session. In the next session, we'll use regex to find and replace patterns and learn about the extract function. For homework, Use any database in the free data sets at kc7cyber.com. Using the email table and the subject field, write a query using regex that finds any subject lines containing numbers. Use generative AI tools like ChatGPT or Copilot to help you write the regex statement, keeping in mind that there may be shortcut syntax used. Post your solution in the comment section to learn with and help others. See you in the next session. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.